Hello, everyone. Um, uh, my name is um, uh, Eugene Reutberg, um, and I'm going to be talking to you about the decision making uh, today. I really appreciate um, uh, Data Art um, uh, for inviting me to speak uh, with you on this. И добрый день для слушателей с других стран. The topic of the decision making is, uh, is extremely important within the world of AI, machine learning, cloud, uh, specifically because uh, the reason why we do any of the analytics, uh, advanced mathematics, AI is really to solve specific problems. And most likely those problems have a lot to do with the ability to make a decision. So if you So from a standpoint of um, uh, decision making, just want to quickly uh, give you the, my background so you actually see how I've been arriving at this specific area. All the way going from uh, 30 years I spent in uh, bringing analytics, data science and technology uh, to really drive the decision making inputs. So I've spent a lot of time uh, doing and helping to drive the decision making inputs, but not the decision-making process itself. And that's a very, very interesting topic that I want to bring to bear and really discuss it with, um, you know, with you folks actually today. So uh, what is a decision, right? We make decisions all the time. You know, as an individual, we have to make a decision what house we want to buy. Where do we need to go to school? What jacket do we want to put on in the morning? Or, of course, the most important, you know, what, uh, what hair do I need to have when I'm in Zoom, right? So all of those decisions, we make it all the time, you know, so many times a day. And hopefully we as a people have a logic that we use to really think about how we decide and hopefully we'll learn as well. The key, the key word here is hopefully, right? Because of course uh, we, uh, we make a lot of mistakes. So those are the human decision-making that we make. Now the companies makes lots of decisions as well, as you know, and uh, on average, actually, a Fortune 500 company makes closer to about 50 to 90 thousands uh, decision. And they could range from a strategic decision, like where will my growth come from in the next two years? Should we enter a new market? Uh, what should be the actually product that I need to focus on? What should be the customers that I need to actually address? How much inventory do I need to keep? And, and, many, and many, many other topics as well, including the other ones too. So uh, this is a very important area. There's lots of decisions that need to be made. And this decision typically requires, as we know, lots of different inputs. So if we think about the gross decision from, I need, to be, uh, I need to have a five inputs to really make this decision. And those inputs have their own inputs to actually make a decision. All right, so we got together, we discussed those inputs, we made a decision and yes, uh, great, uh, we made the goal, we implemented the decision, we met the goal. Uh, excellent, uh, everyone is congratulating each other. All right, later, a different team makes same type of decisions. A different team makes same type of decision, yet they kind of forget that instead of five factors they need to have or five inputs, it's only three inputs. And then resulting in a poor decision and decline in sales. And okay, you think that we learn from this experience? We, uh, uh, we had the same problem, different team, different time. One team did very well, another team did not do uh, actually very well. The problem is we do not learn from those experiences. And that's, and that's the fundamental problem that, uh, that we need to actually address uh, because what we have learned over the last five or six years is that the companies do not know and do not remember what decisions they made and how they made them. Uh, this is amazing, right? Uh, we've done the study a few years back, uh, uh, really, uh, really across 300 executives, um, uh, 50 companies on those very topics. How many decisions did you make? What was the success rate and how did you make them? Very few people remember, uh, they were not sure, they cannot recall. 
how is it actually possible, right? So the situation with the decision making is actually very, very strange right now. Uh, uh, people go to the meetings, they think, uh, they think that they will have a rational discussions, while at the same time, they're gonna feel it's almost like a black box that's spewing the decisions in a random way. So this is the, this is the paradox that, that we need to uh, actually address. The most important, the most important asset of the company is the decisions, because everything we do is to help to make better decisions and then execute on those. And yet we have the least transparent, the least understood environment when it comes to the decision, right? So how is it possible? But at the same time, uh, as we mentioned, the decision is the most important. Uh, decision really matter. And if you look at the uh, study done by Bain, that the companies that make and execute a decision better really significantly outperform the any other peers. Uh, in terms of revenue, about five times. Uh, in terms of EBITDA, about 5.5 times. Shareholder return, about four times, right? So why, why is it actually happening? Why the companies do not track the decision, do not learn from decision, do not remember the decision? Why we as individuals do not learn sometimes those decisions and do not learn from our mistakes? So if I will bring another example, when it comes to the medicine, so uh, about 32% of the doctors uh, reported, uh, uh, reported the error uh, uh, out of 70% uh, that noting that's the right thing uh, to do. So 70% of the doctors saying, yes, it is the right thing to really report the error and learn from them, but only 32% only doing it, which by the way, resulted in about 400,000 death. So why is it actually happening? The most important problem that we're realizing is something they call the ego effect. So which means that rather than own up to our mistakes and learn from them, we tend to invade the new explanation as to the why mistakes occurred and ignore them altogether. And that's exactly the big problem, no matter whether you are doing it individually or you're doing it within the company. So when it comes to within the company, uh, in addition to the ego effect, you have other problems. Silos thinking, you are in a one function marketing sales. You don't think beyond that. You're not relying too much on data. It's a lot more about intuition. You're not thinking about the right problem. You also fear to demonstrate the incompetence. That's the big problem when it comes to individual drivers within the business. When it comes to organizational issues, there is no institutional knowledge, no communication challenges, very often decisions done on based on the politics, not based on the data. Very archaic decision-making processes. You know, if you look at how the companies make the decisions right now, it's a very old 30, 40, 50 years old. Lots of barriers still exist when it comes to the IT and analytics. So those are the fundamental reasons why we have a problems within the companies and why people do not want to report their mistakes and learn from them. Because that's the point of the decision making. We made the decision. We know what resulted. Let's learn from them. That's not, uh, that's not happening. So what is the impact of that problem? Impact is very big. So think about it this way, uh, you know, we, um, uh, we're talking about analytics, we're talking about AI, we're talking about machine learning, all of those things we do on the left side, right? We take the analytics, we convert it into the insights to drive the recommendation. However, that's the part, that's the right part that I'm talking about. And that's the part is the problem is we don't understand this, right? We don't understand what happens in those rooms when they make the final decisions, we have, therefore, we cannot connect directly the left part with the, uh, with the right part, recommendation and the decision, and we have no learning that will come out of it. That's exactly the fundamental issue. And this is the big problem that I've been looking at for the last 10, 15 years, trying to convince the clients to drive the analytics value and demonstrate ROI on data and analytics and AI. This is exactly the problem. If we don't know the right part, we cannot demonstrate the actual results, not the results on the paper that we show with analytics and AI. 
but we cannot show the actual results. And so that's that's the problem that needs to be solved. Now, as a result, yeah, uh, you know, as I mentioned, that uh, more than 50, 90,000 decisions per year, the poor decision cost approximately 3% of earnings. This is a $700 billion opportunity for, uh, for Fortune s and actually of 500 companies. That's a huge area that needs to be addressed and we need to be addressing that. Moreover, and that's what I was talking about just before, if we have on the left side, we've got all of the data in the world, we drive that through AI, we're developing insights, developing recommendation, and yet the executives, the manager sitting there, first of all, most of them don't, not most of them, some of them don't want to leverage insights. And you know, luckily this group is becoming less and less right now. And we also do not know what happens inside that very room. That's the fundamental issue. So all of that drives the humongous waste of money in the last 10 to 15 years when it comes to data analytical investment. And that's the fundamental issue that we have right now, which is data analytics and AI, it's very great, but we have not yet made tremendous change in the business value in the business improvement. Uh, another very important element here, 78% of data-driven insights recommendation did not change the stakeholder decision. So if they had a point of view before in terms of what decision they want to make, no matter what data you're going to provide, did not change it either. So th uh, that's the fundamental issue. And finally, the point about the impact, you know, if you think about where the money and where the spending has been, it's been all around this left part. We drove the data analytics inside part, almost nothing and the most important element of the value chain. Almost nothing in the most important value, but because we need to understand decision. We need to understand what happens after that. We need to understand how did the company act upon that decision? And then what's the result to create this loop? So that's the problem that we're dealing with. Uh, moreover, uh, uh, post COVID-19, there are uh, tremendous shifts happening in the decision making. That's why I called the presentation to be new way of decision making. One of the biggest things happened, as you know, uh, as we started getting in the COVID in February, March, a lot of issue had to do with uh, remote working. People went back. How do you make a decision when you're working remotely? Also, the number of decisions have increased tremendously, which means that now all of a sudden, you know, we need to quickly decide, should we close the plan? Should we not close the plan? Should we open 50%? Should we not? What do we need to do with the supply? The number of decisions was overwhelming and actually existing decision system could not sustain that. And that's a very, very important things to actually talk about. The decision speed and scale, that was, that was a fundamental thing that the, uh, that the company need to change right now to be able to develop the infrastructure to really quickly get the decisions learned from them and try to do it. And finally, very important trend that's been happening, of course, even before the COVID-19 is the decentralization, distributed decision-making, meaning that that there is no more, not there's no more, but uh, a lot of companies are moving from central decision-making to the decentralization, decision-making done by individual teams. And that's what makes the executives really worried about, which is how do they know how the individual teams make a decision? Can they watch? Can they track that? Can they learn? Can they share the best knowledge among the teams? You know, as I shared the example before on that growth strategy topic, two separate teams made different decisions using different uh, uh, different inputs. But why had they had they had the system that would actually provide them that learning? They would have been able to do much better. So that's a very very important. Actually, if some of you know the Netflix, very interesting uh, part of that uh, Netflix actually culture is ability to learn from the mistakes that they're actually making. So, so the three shifts about remote, remote working or remote decision-making, speed and scale and the decentralization, all of those are demanding the companies to make the important changes. So what's the value that we're talking about addressing this problem 
of the decision making and lack of transparency. $700 billion of the business opportunity, $160 billion in improving the return and uh, on investment from data and AI. Because a lot of executives, a lot of folks are pushing back right now and saying, I've spent millions of dollars, where is my return? And as I mentioned before in the prior pages, if we do not connect our recommendation using analytics AI with the decision that was made, with the action that was then following and results and connect in a feedback loop, nothing is going to happen. This number, 160 billion times 60% of it, right, which is about 100 billion of the wasteful spending. So those are the two big things that we need to do. So what is the solution? Imagine that we have the situation where now we know everything about the decision. We know the decisions, how they're made, we know the results, and we can actually show how can you improve it. The stakeholders, the decision makers, have immediate access to those decisions. They can see them in a digital format, they can test the decision in the real time, they can be constantly reminding of a past decision and what they should do, uh, what they should do better. Now, those decisions themselves, it's a very interesting if we can structure them, becoming the digital element, becoming a data that now I can leverage and I can model and I can actually develop much better predictive system. Another very important point that we're trying to make here, and that needs to happen, is that we have chief analytics officers in the companies. We have chief data officers in the company. Why don't we have a chief decision officers? Meaning that we spend a lot of time learning about data, learning about analytics, data governments. There is so much going on in the companies and analytics and data science. We spent last five, 10 years on that. Yet, wh what about decisions? Should we have the function within the company that will be focusing on that as much as we're focusing on data? Our future will be where we will not have any more projects. The predictive decision system will be available. And not a, not a single decision enabling dollar will be there. A lot of companies right now start thinking like that. How do we move from even calling the functions to be data science, analytics, AI function to the decision enabling, decision empowering uh, function, which means they want to go to the results rather than to what the capability is. So that's the decision system of record that we can actually create. As I mentioned, the decision will be captured. We can analyze. What do we know? We know what, when, who, how, how well. And as you can imagine, we have independent variables in what, when, who, and how, and then dependent variables on how well. Now we can do a lot of good things. I'll show you that in a second. We can also drive, and that's a very important thing that I've been spending a lot of time on. Decisions should not be all based on recommendation alone. They should be based on the knowledge, should be based on the learning. We don't do enough. One of the big problems with the analytics and AI uh, industry that we are very transactional industry. We're running models, running models, running models. We're not learning. We're not creating the knowledge. We should be able to do it. We also want to talk about how the human and AI is going to collaborate. I'm going to talk a little bit later. Of course, there are certain percentage of the business decisions that have been automated, which means there's no human involved. But that will, that will need to change. And finally, as I mentioned, how do we institutionalize the decisions and decision actually making? So the idea would be what type of solution that could be possible going clockwise. Let's first understand and structure current decision making. Somebody in the room, once there is a data discussing the decisions, can we capture that? So it's almost like we have a, you know, we have a recording device that recording the discussion and then we can mine that discussion to create the decision to decision structure created like you see here in the middle. Here's the decision. Here's the drivers. Here's the insight. Here's data that we need to drive those insights that will drive the drivers, which in kind of in turn inform our decisions. Like we've talked about uh, kind of an example actually before. 
That's what I call structure. Let's define what is going on. Let's also provide the tool, a collaborative tool right now. There are tools right now that help us to collaborate. I mean, we are right now using Zoom talking to you guys right now. But as a part of that, you know, Slack or Microsoft Teams, uh, there's a collaborative tools. We can provide the tool that they can team in a virtual environment being able to do those type of things. They would be able to capture that, uh, uh, that trees and develop. Once we have this as a decision tree, decision structure, we then want to learn and optimize, as I mentioned before, right? How do we now, I have hundred thousands of decisions in a digital format in my database. Now I can start learning and I can develop. And finally, augment and automate, which is how, how can I automate the system all the way up to the decision maker, I, I don't want to replace it yet, and eventually automate in the type of decisions that are going to be there. And that's, of course, the challenge, and that's the question. At what point automation of all of the decisions is going to happen? Of course, it will never be of all of the decisions, but we will see that uh, uh, that are actually going first as an augmentation. So kind of automate it up to the human, learning from a human, and then automating. Again, I'll show you that example there. So there are companies right now that have been already doing this type of work in terms of capturing and collaborating. The companies like CloverPop, they've been developing the system that can actually easily capture the decision and then provide the, all of the information required to understand how the decision made, who made it. They also provide communication to the execution team. And also they're gonna wait for the results to really put in the database and the system. They have a very good relationship, uh, not, uh, not relationship, but all, uh, already developed integration with Microsoft Teams and Slack. And there's, uh, there are a few other solutions, not too many, by the way, out there, but there exist. So that's a capture collaborate. As I mentioned, of course, learn and optimize. Now, once I got a database of all of those decisions, I can do very different type of analysis. I can do basic analysis first to, uh, to really understand how many decisions, who made it, how they were made, and then getting to more interesting, more sophisticated type of decision uh, metrics as a decision effectiveness. So did I actually, did we improve sales with that decision? What was the cost of my decision? So how do I think about decision efficiency, decision effectiveness, and ultimately getting to the point of developing the advice based on the optimum decision trees and optimum performance so that you can then say by the way when we were looking at example before you have to use those five factors to really define the gross you know what would be the gross opportunity in the next uh, two years and leverage that as a as a as a way to remind the team of that so developing the decision tree optimizing that's going to be the most important so if we have the system in place, now, now we know. Remember the right side that I mentioned before? They had a problem, but now we know, right? Now we, are, we can be much better connected, and now we can learn. And that's an extremely important point, and that's exactly only through that we may be able to maximize the value of analytics, data analytics, AI investments that the companies are making. Otherwise, it's going to be the problem. So this is, the, this is where the situation we were coming from, right? So if you think about it right now, we're moving from the point where decisions and actions are in a black box. And our results, the probability of our results, it's only a function of recommendations because we don't know too much. We want to go from there to the, be to, uh, to the white box. Now we understand the decisions and actions and I, we can get better results as well because we can have more variables, more factors to be an overall model with the decision, uh, with the decision and actions. And that's extremely important. We also got to start doing new way of working. If you look at the left side, we're going to have within the companies, it's going to be platform, the decision platform. They can actually bring all of the data that we are developing and all of the insights to, to develop recommendations. Then, as we call them, decision advisors, they will talk to the decision makers, they will discuss, they will make a decision, 
we go to the action, we go to results, and then we do the feedback loop. That's, the, that's exactly what the process needs to happen in, in a new way of working. And on the right side, as I talked about, how this structure of the decision will be. We will have the opportunity to really look at every decision, understand the data inputs, insights that went into the decision so that we can actually work with it, we can understand the value of it, right? So as I mentioned, ultimately, this is going to be how do we connect? Because again, uh, 80 to 90% of decisions made by the humans right now. And as we try to improve that, and I'm talking about decisions, not just recommendations. Recommendations are maybe 40 to 50% automated right now with the analytics AI. I'm talking about ultimate decisions, uh, probably only about five to 10% at most actually automated. So we still need to work with a human. Uh, on that. So the idea would be, okay, we got to leverage the AI enabled inside to the de decision connections. But again, we got to use the human experience as well to create the self-learning system. So if AI is going to produce the decisions uh, and, and, and let the human pick and choose, and the human is going to uh, pick and choose or pick inside here, we're going to learn from it. And that's going to be the process, you know, ultimately coming together to drive the decision and then get into what we call as a reusable knowledge. And that's, that's, that's another big thing that I mentioned before. I want to mention one more time. The companies do not have the institutional memory or institutional knowledge right now. How do we make those decisions? Who made those decisions? Uh, we have a brilliant people, brilliant managers. Why we're not capturing that knowledge, right? Why, why we're not turning it to the digital format so that future generation of the manager can easily look at that, right? And so what we talked about is that how do we take this new way of thinking about decisions and use it as an element of the knowledge? I mean, the knowledge needs to be beyond that, uh, 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 beyond that as well. There is a processes, there's other elements within the company that we need to turn into the knowledge. But that's the key thing. It's not just the decision making, but also the, uh, but also the knowledge here. One of the things that I want to mention about the learning, and this is, you know, I was using the example with um, doctors uh, not willing to admit to their mistakes. This is a great example of how aviation has changed. I mean, I don't have to tell you, I mean, you probably remember the uh, uh, 2009 uh, event that accident that happened when um, um, uh, when uh, uh, in New York area um, the captain landed uh, in the Hudson River the plane and you know everyone was cheering and saying look at you know this you know you brilliant guy and this is excellent and he's saying absolutely not I did not do anything what I've done is something that we've learned over so many years of leveraging the black box or data recording system that can actually record, uh, record what happened in the planes, record the discussion what happened uh, during the pilots, and then learn from those mistakes. And that's, that's exactly the point that we're trying to make here. They've learned that out of, uh, in, you know, in uh, uh, 1912, eight out of the 14 pilots died from a plane crashes. In 2013, 210 out of the 3 billion commercial passengers died. There was a, such a humongous improvement of that because, as I mentioned, the aviation, so aviation company decided not to worry about the ego effect. They, they couldn't afford it because too many accidents there, they needed to learn. And that's exactly the point I'm trying to make about the business too, from that standpoint. Um, Learn from the mistakes of others, uh, as Eleanor Roosevelt said, you cannot live long enough to make them all yourself. And that's exactly what we need to change. Finally, business is learning. Again, you know, you probably know Ray Dahlia, one of the best uh, hedge fund actually manager. And one of the things that he's been very obsessive about is that decision making. How do we actually record and learn from those? And that's what, that's what uh, made him one of the most uh, successful um, 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 hedge fund actually manager. Uh, Reed Hastings, uh, Netflix, the CEO of Netflix. Again, extremely interesting culture. Uh, the culture that really accepting 
and, and really encouraging the people to share their mistakes. They have a meetings where they get together and they discuss the mistakes. What's important then is they will never be fired if they make a mistake, but they will be fired if they do not learn from it. They create a memo once they made the mistakes and they share with the rest of the company. And again, this is what's important. And the companies are picking up a lot more right now. What we need to help them to do is in addition to changing the behavior, we got to give them the tools, the platforms that can help them to, uh, to actually address it. So let me quickly summarize the entire presentation. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, I think I've actually a few minutes over time. Decision is the most important asset of the company, yet the least transparent and the least understood. Uh, our inability to overcome our biases, both individually and business and constraints, cost a lot in a business performance, as well as the very low uh, ROI on the data analytics and insights. We need to overcome the ego effect, as I talked about, and begin learning from our mistakes and others. That's important for the behavior of the company. We need to provide the tool that can help us to capture, track our decision. So now we will know how they are made. We will know what's the result and what are the learnings. We should also look at decision as a data. And that's a that's important po point. It's not the end result, but it's a continuous loop. Data, actions, and so that we can improve tomorrow, next week, next month. The decision is not an end point. Action is not an end point. The result is not an end point, but, uh, but really elements of the decision learning loop. We can finally connect, as I talked about, from data, analytics, insights, recommendation to decision, action, results. We can connect this. And I think the most important message that I'm trying to communicate is we got to give uh, the decision the, uh, the attention it deserves. It has to be because we cannot improve the performance without it. Welcome, Chief Decision Officer. Uh, anyway, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Uh, you know, if you have any questions, uh, I think that the moderator will help to share that with me.